Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up, guys? Pastor Jim Cruz here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church, and welcome to Atmosphere Live. If you're on Facebook Live, give me a little wave right there in the comment section. Hey, if you're on our app, take a moment and connect with us through one of those uh, online connection card numbers there that you could see. And we're just so grateful to be with you for another Sunday. Hey, do you know that next Sunday our church turns three years old? I cannot believe that we have been together for three years. It's incredible the things that God has done in such a short amount of time. And even thinking about last year, 2020, how we were introduced to some of you because of this whole crazy weird season that is never ending. Like we got to meet you. Like we literally have people tuning in from all over the world. And so take a moment right now. Where are you watching from today? Let us know. Interact with us. And we have Dada, our host with the most on there, to make your experience a great one. Hey, I want to pray and I want to dive into part four of our series called Heart for the House. If you're making some notes, just write that down, Heart for the House. And if you do have our app downloaded, you can follow along on our app with today's message through our notes, all right? So let me pray this prayer and we'll jump into our final talk on Heart for the House. Father, I thank you so much for this house, the house of Atmosphere Church, Lord, and we are your house. And I pray that today, God, you would meet us in the mess that may be taking place in our lives, God. I pray for a divine encounter with you, Lord, that when we are done, when we are signing off, God, we will know that we had this amazing, powerful encounter with the living God. And we thank you in advance for how you're going to do that. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. Okay, so today is our final talk in this series, and I'm simply going to read the words of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew. Because I believe what he says in this particular passage, which is from the most famous sermon he ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount, that we can unpack so much when it comes to the condition of our hearts. So let me read to you, verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That is a powerful statement. That the treasure in your life determines the passion of your heart. It's kind of interesting to look at it that way. But I want to connect the dots here because as we've been talking about having a heart for the house, you, you can't talk about having a heart for the house without first talking about the treasure. And I know as I even mentioned that word, there's some red flags popping up right now. And you're like, oh no, here comes the financial talk, right? Here, here comes the money talk. And 
And I, I will tell you, if, if there's something in you that is getting a little uncomfortable, I want you to know it's not just from you. It's really from me. I, I'm really conflicted anytime I'm in a position that I have to start talking about generosity or giving or finances or money. And, and here's the reason why I'm conflicted. Because there's a part of me that just doesn't like the subject whatsoever because of what other people have done in the past that have been in my position. They've abused people's hard-earned money. And because they've abused it and, and because you know, they, they've done uh, inappropriate things with it or, or because I, I think sometimes churches overshare about it, it turns some people off. You know, some people would be like, you know, I would go to church, but every time I go to church, they, they talk about money. I'm kind of like the opposite of that. I mean, some of you that have been watching Atmosphere for a while, you may be thinking to yourself right now, come to think of it, I don't think I've ever heard Pastor Jim talk about money before. Or if I have, it's like been only like once. And it's because the other part of me is, is conflicting. I, I want to talk about it all the time. Because it's in the area of our treasure, it's in the area of our giving that we experience God in more tangible ways than any other area of our lives. And I will tell you personally, my own life and all of the people that I've shared with and talked with all these years in ministry, that there are more God stories in people's lives in the area of treasure and finances than in any other area of their life, like body healings or deliverances or whatever. There are more God stories and miracles when it comes to people's treasure. So I, I wanna tee it up that way because it's, it's super important for you to know my heart when it comes to talking about the idea of treasure, the idea of being generous towards the church, being generous towards God's house. So as we think about this, I, I wanna take you to an Old Testament passage that deals with how God showed generosity or, or how God moved through the people's generosity for the first house, the tent of meeting as it's called, or it's also referred to in the Old Testament as the tabernacle of God. It says in Exodus 35, if you're following along the notes, Exodus 35, beginning at verse 21, it says, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting or the house for all of its services and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, and scarlet yarn or fine linen or goat hair, ram skins dyed red or other durable leather brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver and bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord. And everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with their hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. We, we need to bring back goat hair suits. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. The leaders brought stones and other gems to, the mount, uh, to be mounted on the ephod and the breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Now what I want to show you today is that it took everybody collectively giving their little bit to ultimately make the big difference. Because I think we get overwhelmed and think, what could I do? How can I give in such a way to make any kind of impact at all? Because I, I don't have that much money. I don't have that, that much treasure. How is my treasure going to make a difference? And here's how your treasure and my treasure makes a difference. We combine it. We bring it together. So I, I want you to know, there is no us without you. I just heard that this week. That really stuck with me. That resonates with me. So, so we're moving in rhythm together, bringing our little bit together. And, and as we bring our little together, it makes something big. 
So here we have the first original house to get it up and running, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Everybody's bringing their little bit. And at the end of the day, there is literally, literally everything necessary to run the house that God had called them to have. And, and I want you to know that God has given us a vision of things that he wants us to do, of, of ways that he wants to move. And in order for us to accomplish the things he wants us to do and to move the way he wants us to move, it's going to take your little bit and my little bit together, moving together to make a big difference for God's kingdom. So in, in a way, this is what we're doing, um, and, and we want to show this in a tangible way with our plus one uh, challenge that we're doing. And some of you, you're like, how am I going to do this? Like, because, because the challenge is we want everyone to bring a dollar bill and, and we're going to take our dollar bills together and we're going to do a random act of love, a no strings attached act of love to a hurting person or family in this area. And, and so you guys can uh, participate virtually. Probably the best way is Venmo, to be honest, and, and there's no fees or whatever that, that are taken out that way. So you could just give a buck and we'll know exactly what that's for. So you can be a part of our plus one challenge where we're going to bless somebody with a random act of love, no strings attached love here in the Conejo Valley. So with that experiment in mind, I just want to show you guys in a tangible way how your one dollar can actually be used to make a big difference for somebody else. It could pay a power bill once we take all of our dollars collectively together and we could do this now in that frame of mind i want you to just have another tangible example of what can be done when we actually all come together so i'm gonna go back in a time portal here and i'm gonna pull up circa 2010 i was leading a church in las vegas we had outgrown the facility that we were in we were kind of having to move but we didn't know exactly how this was going to be accomplished because i mean you can't just, you know, find churches, you know, on LoopNet or Zillow.com, you know, for sale or for lease. So a lot of times churches like we were uh, had to go out and create the church from another kind of used space. And so we had been praying and believing for the shoe store building that was like in the epicenter of Las Vegas. And we had been praying for it and believing for it. And finally, they had contacted us when our lease was about ready to expire in the facility that we were at and we had outgrown it that we had no more parking we were already doing three or four gatherings it was crazy what god was doing so we had to find a new location they called us and said we want you guys our building has been vandalized it's dilapidated nobody's been in it and we had known nobody was in it but they just weren't ready to say yes to us and we weren't ready to actually move but the moment came and all of the planets were in alignment. God opened doors no man can shut. And then we got the building for nothing. The only condition was that we would fix it up and it would be on our dime. And I was like, wow, how are we going to do this? You know, we had, I don't know, probably 1,500 people attending our church at the time. And so I was like, okay, like how do you take a dilapidated shoe store building and make something beautiful out of it? And here's how it happened. Everybody brought their little bit. They all brought a little bit of their treasure and collectively together all of the treasure that was brought in allowed us to convert this dilapidated shoe store building into a beautiful sanctuary for God and they are still meeting there to this day and I have a great relationship still with our Vegas church some of you are living in Vegas and you've seen it you've been in that building and I tell you 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 can't have a building like that without everybody coming together and giving their little bit. Even Tara and I personally, when we made this journey and we knew that God was calling us into this building, we had this dream in our heart that we wouldn't just have a sanctuary for our worship, that we would have a place for our young adults to gather and, and have concerts and, and, and be able to meet on the weekend and hang out and do karaoke nights and just, you know, great coffee. And so, I actually had a truck that I was so proud of, a Tundra that I had paid off, first car I'd ever paid off in my entire life, and I was so excited. Normally, I'd get rid of the car before I pay it off and get another car, but this one, I paid it off. I was so proud of this truck. I, I mean, I love this truck. Called it Darth Vader. It was a black Toyota Tundra, but the Spirit of God moved on my heart and said, are, are you willing to sacrifice in order for the vision to become a reality? 
And so I got my wife praying about it and we made the decision that we were gonna sell the truck and the money that we got from selling the truck, we were gonna then pour it back in so that we could finish the cafe for this dilapidated shoe store building that we had. I have some pictures just to show you the transformation so you can kind of visualize it. If you haven't been to Vegas, you haven't been in our, our, our church there on Sahara Avenue. But if you were to draw a map of the city of Las Vegas and put your finger right in the middle of the map, you would put it on top of the address where our building is at. Like that was a strategic location that God had chosen for us to build his house so that we could have a maximized reach. And that church right now is reaching so many people where other churches are building and in like the upper middle class neighborhoods, our church is down in the hood. It is like in, in the urban part of Las Vegas and God is moving in Sin City. And I, I just, I wanted to give you a working example to say, is it possible that my treasure could actually be leveraged with other people's treasure for us to do something amazing and beautiful and great for God's kingdom? And the answer is uh, yes! Of course, and that church is just one example, but I, I'm thinking of, of how God is wanting to do something for us here in this new church that is not even three years old yet. But what's gonna be required of us is some kind of sacrifice, just like what was required of us to finish that cafe. Like, there, there was a generosity that had to come from me in order for that vision to be fulfilled, in order for that house to be completed. And I, I want to tell you, there, when it comes to generosity, there, there are like three main levels that I've seen with people in, in how they are generous, especially in, in how they share their treasure, right? And they, they uh, let their treasure be leveraged for God's kingdom. So here's level one. Just write this down. I call this level the tipper the tipper. Now this is somebody who acknowledges the fact that they're being inspired and encouraged and built up in their faith uh, from gatherings like this. And so every once in a while, when they kind of are moved emotionally or stirred, you know, to, to do something, they'll, they'll give something. But it's just every once in a while, it's when they're thinking about it, it's not regular, it's not consistent, it's not sacrificial, it's just like a $20 bill here or a $100 Venmo there, and that's kind of the tipper. But I think even if you're a tipper, it's great, because I don't want to knock the tipper, because the tipper is at least giving something versus those people that are on level zero that are giving nothing. The, we call those the nothingers. I don't know what, what title you would give them. But listen to this scripture, 2 Corinthians, and I think this is good. 2 Corinthians 9, it says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, do you notice a common word in that? Let me say it again, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, type it out the word all, just say all, you will abound in every good work. All times, all things, all you need, you will abound in every good work. Here's the reality. God doesn't need our money. He doesn't need it. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Like he, he owns the wealth of, of the world. Everything in this world is really his if you want to get really technical about it. So he doesn't need our money. So what is God after? God is after our hearts. And really God ultimately is wanting to partner with us in our lives. Because I, I will tell you what I said a little bit ago that I have more stories personally and more stories in our community when it comes to people's generosity than any other area. So some of you are stuck in neutral with your faith. You're not growing, but you're not necessarily backsliding. You're just kind of stuck in this no man's land. You're, you're not really developing your faith. And you know it, even me talking about it right now, you're like convicted by it. You're like, I know. So I, I wanna tell you 
that when you start trusting God in the area of your personal finances, you level up in your faith. So you start growing exponentially because you have these tangible ways to see that God is real. You start experiencing God in daily things that you're doing because you are trusting God in an area that is, is God is having to show up for your life. And I know this is a struggle for a lot of people. A lot of people are like, God can have all of my life except my wallet. But what we know from what Jesus said is he doesn't really have our heart until he has a hold of our wallets. That's something to think about. He's, God is not imposing something on us. He's inviting us into something beautiful and something that will actually elevate our faith. So here's the second level. Write this down. And this is the contributor. This is the committed giver. This is a person that has determined ahead of time, despite what their you know, bills are, that they're going to give, and they're going to give a benchmark. They're, they're going to say, uh, it, it's not just like an afterthought, it's like a part of the budget. It's like, okay, I pay you know, my rent, I pay my, my uh, treasure to God's kingdom, I pay my utility bills, you know, I pay Netflix, whatever the case might be, and it usually go down the list, but it, it's premeditated I, i'm giving and, and i'm giving on a regular consistent basis now some of you we don't need to get into the semantics like do i have to give every week do i just give monthly do i give on my net or my gross and these are questions that people mean well when they ask it but there's no rule book and that says you have to give this particular way every week or every time you're you meet for worship you have to give something some of you, it's just easier for you to do it monthly because of the way you're paid, and so you just give it monthly. What I love now with technology is that when you go to like our app or you go to our webpage, there's a feature on there that says recurring. And so when you level up in your generosity and you move from being a tipper that you give every once in a while, which is awesome, to move to this regular contributor, it's great because you just click on recurring gift and every week or every month however you select it it will go ahead and take it out for you without you even have to really think about it you have it in your budget but it's working for you even when you're off the computer i, th I think that's awesome it's great great feature and maybe god is calling some of you to level up to this level of giving now this is where the conversation comes in about tithing right this is t seems to be like a hot topic a red button issue for a lot of people like you know, tithing, that comes from the Old Testament, that's under the old law, and we're not required to tithe anymore. And for those of you that may be new to this concept or, or this word tithing, uh, tithing simply means tenth. And so this is a principle that we find in Scripture, and we find it both in the Old and the New Testament, mind you. It's talked about in both of them. But it's, it, the idea is setting the benchmark for your generosity at 10% of what your income is. So when people talk about tithing, what they're saying is that they've determined the benchmark of their generosity at 10%. So they tithe, they, they take their income and they're saying a 10% is what I'm making sure is reserved for the house. And it's so beautiful because in scripture, there's a promise attached to this principle of giving a 10th of what you bring in. And in, uh, it's found in Malachi chapter three, verse 10, it says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows, then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Now, this is a promise for Israel specifically, but the principle of blessing is covered with this principally. So whether you're a nation or whether you're a person, that, that God is attaching a blessing to this benchmark. 
with the benchmark of tithe, there is a promise of a blessing. And I don't know what is the bigger blessing. God opening the windows of heaven and pouring out the blessing or rebuking the devourer from my life. Because I will tell you that as much as I love having these random checks come in the mail or somebody you know, drops drops a, um, you know, something into my account or something weird happens with the IRS or whatever, like, hey, you got, you got free money. As much as I love that, I love it when the devourers rebuke from my life, when I have things that never break down because I'm faithful in giving regularly, consistently. I had a truck that was given to us years ago. We had one car. This is like years before that Black Tundra. And we had one car, we had babies, and I, I, was, I was trying to leave the car for Tara, and, and we didn't have the income to have a second car, but I believed for God to give us a second car, and he did. He gave us this truck that had a problem with the engine. It was given to us with the premise that you're going to have to put a new engine in it. And my thought was, well, I'll just drive it until the engine dies. And sure, I might be on the freeway, I might be in an intersection, but I, that is a risk I'm willing to take. Give me that truck. And so I drove that truck for two years, and that truck never broke down on me. That check engine light was on there but it never broke down. I was actually able to pay it forward and give that truck away to somebody else. God blessed me supernaturally. I think it was the Toyota truck that I got in place of that truck. So all that to tell you that there is a double blessing attached to this benchmark of tithing. And so some of you, God is calling to level up. It's great that you are generous towards God's kingdom every once in a while when your heart gets stirred. But what if you transition into this intentional way of being generous? Say, I'm going to regularly give because I understand that the more I give, the more the kingdom of God can advance because God uses our resources for his kingdom to advance. Now, here's the level three. This is probably the top tier level. This is what God, I believe, is, is calling a lot of us into because a lot of us are already giving, tithing, we're contributors like that. But this is the level I call the investor. So you have the tipper, the contributor, then you level up to this idea of the investor. And now just, just like you know, you may buy a stock, right? You, you buy the stock and you study the stock and you, you, you pay some money, you become a shareholder, right? So you're, you're interested in this company all of a sudden. Why are you interested in this company all of a sudden? Well, because you have thousands of dollars attached to this company. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, remember? So when you become a shareholder of a company, you get super invested in that company. So if, if that company uh, is in the news, you're, you're paying attention to it, right? Because you're, you're an investor. So, so you're, you're like trying to figure out how, what kind of ways can I leverage myself to have this end in mind for this particular thing I'm investing in. So when I, I'm talking about being an investor in the kingdom of God, we're not talking 10% benchmark here. We're talking like you are all in. Like you, you are looking for opportunities all the time to be more generous than just giving 10%. That you're, you're looking at your finances completely different. Instead of just saying, hey, it's, you know, 10%, you're saying everything I have belongs to God. And if God needs it, if God wants it, I will give it. Because I know that when I'm doing this, I'm investing into something that is beyond this earth. And that a lot of people, don't, they have a hard time. They wrestle around with this. That, that there is actually a retirement account waiting for us in heaven. And everything we do, how we live our lives, how we leverage our treasure, everything we do matters for eternity. So why wouldn't you want to invest in the kingdom of God? What do you think that the return on investment is for the kingdom of God? Think about that for a second. That you have this retirement plan waiting for you in heaven for everything that you do for God's kingdom on earth. But besides that, think about people. Because when you're investing in the kingdom of God, you're actually investing in people. That like God values every human being. Every time I see somebody, instead of getting mad at them, especially if I'm on the 101 freeway, I love to pray over them and say, God, I pray blessing over them, that, that you love them and you died for them and they have unsurpassable worth. I, I declare that. I decree and declare that over people because as I declare that, my heart changes towards them. And, and you have to know as being generous towards God's kingdom, 
the biggest investment that you can invest in is other people's lives. And so when you are giving to the house, you are actually giving to help change people's lives. Because that's what we're doing as a church. Nobody's getting rich from what we're doing by everyone giving their little bit. Pretty much when you give to Atmosphere Church, you're giving through Atmosphere Church to change lives, to see people healed and to see families restored. That's the way we like to say it. And it's important for you to know that what you give is an investment. And so when you get to the status of, oh, I'm an investor, then it's a different ball game. You see everything from a different lens. You see people from a different lens. You see everything uh, being brought into your life differently through a different lens. Now you start looking, I've been blessed so that I might, I might become a blessing. I'm blessed so that I might become a blessing to somebody else. Now, as I'm thinking about people that have invested in Atmosphere Church, and some of you that I'm talking to right now, you've, you've given irregularly, maybe you've given here or there, or maybe some of you are tithers, you're faithful givers, um, and, and whether it's the benchmarks 10% or 1%, we're, we're truly grateful for your uh, consistent uh, generosity. But then others of you are investing on top of that. And, and I just want to speak to you. Like, I want you to know when you, when you are giving to Atmosphere Church, I, you are a part of this, that since we have been together, we have seen over 300 people make first-time decisions to follow Jesus. Over 300. There are some churches that have been meeting for 30 years, not three years, and they haven't even seen 10 people make first-time decisions to receive Christ and to follow Christ. We've seen 300. We have then watched over 100 of them make next step decisions and follow it up by the outward expression of water baptism. I, I am doing another one here next weekend, here at the ocean. And I know that, that more breakthrough and, and more uh, lives are going to be changed and, and hope is, is going to be born uh, from the baptisms that we've been able to start local ministries here and serving ministries. We're doing serve days twice a year. We, we have prayed over people in the middle of a serve day where they've given their lives to Christ. We've got to pray over them in, in, a, in a hurt in their life. We, we've seen miracles. We, we've seen uh, our young people who've been especially hit in COVID. We have seen them just grow exponentially in their faith. We've seen them be able to connect with each other we even have couples getting engaged to get married that they've met in our church like god is using atmosphere church in powerful ways and when you give you when you financially give your treasure to the house of atmosphere i want you to know you are making a difference whether you give a dollar or you give a million dollars you are making a difference so i want you to know that uh we do global ministry not just local ministry we do global ministry that that when you give you're actually helping us bless our pastors in lusaka zambia africa uh pastor ernest and laika they are good friends of ours we partner with our vegas church to continue to partner with our schools in zambia and god has grown this church and their school of 80 kids to now they have over 500 kids that have actually went through all of the schooling graduated and are now back teaching at the very same school that helped them and schools in africa you don't get to go for free like you do in america you have to pay for it so we are sponsoring all these kids to give them a hand up out of poverty by educating them and discipling them and feeding them i mean some good stuff is happening and about two months ago, we gave a, an extremely generous gift. We just took a Sunday offer and we just said, we're going to send it all to Africa. And we did, and we made a difference. And to show you what kind of difference we made, I want you to listen to Pastor Ernest give Atmosphere Church a shout out. Go ahead and check this out. Hello, Pastor Jim. Hello, Atmosphere Church. This is Ernest Stalin, the pastor for Stream of Living Waters Church and Ministries in Zambia. I want to thank you so much for your financial support that you've been uh, giving to our schools in Zambia and also the church. The part of the money you sent recently, we have, we have, we have made um, 
bathrooms, as you can see on the picture there, we have also painted the school. We are going to rehabilitate desks which have been destroyed. So we are so grateful to God and to you for whatever you are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Atmos Church. Church, listen to me. You just saw that video. When you are generous to this house, you are giving through this house to change lives all the way in Zambia, Africa. Isn't that just blow your mind? Like what we can do, what we can accomplish together when we're giving like this together, it's a wise investment. So why do I bring all of this up for Heart for the House? Well, number one, I want you to be blessed. Some of you have been struggling with finances for years, for decades. And what do I need to do to break through to you that God wants to partner with you and show you that he can be trusted, not just with your finances, but every area of your life. But when he starts breaking through for your finances, it gives you tangible faith to spill over into other areas of your life. Some of you, I'm telling you, your financial struggle is going to cease from existing when you start trusting God with your treasure. It's going to stop. But that's why I'm telling you. But I'm also telling you this because I know God has given us a big vision for what he wants to do in this big valley. He wants to do some big things. And in order for these big things to happen, it's going to take our little bit. And our little bit put together, we are going to be able to accomplish these big things that God has called us to do. I want to tell you, I love preaching to you. I love speaking to you. I'm in the studio right now. It's great. But I, I want us to be together. I want our in-person to be with our online uh, family. And how we're going to do that, it's going to probably cost us about $10,000 of new equipment so that we're going to be able to stream live in the ballroom or in the amphitheater, you know, when we're meeting uh, with the rest of, like, I, I'm privately in the studio because of the limitations that we have with the equipment and the personnel that we have to run the equipment. So some of you, I, I mean, together, like, you don't have 10 grand. I don't have 10 grand, but maybe on, on top of the gift of the, the tithe that you say, I, I'm going to, for the next three months, I, I'm going to give an extra $100 so that we can get to that goal, so that we can buy that equipment and, and we could actually come together and the in-person can be with our online. We could all be together and, and it's, it's going to be beautiful. But maybe some of you are like, I can, I can just Venmo 10 grand to you right now. Like that's, I've been, I've been praying about this. Well, maybe that's great. And I believe some of you have the gift of giving. Some of you, you, you have a next level generosity spirit. And I believe that's supernatural. That, that when, when God basically was scooping out spiritual gifts, he gave you an extra scoop of generosity. So it comes easy and it's very life-giving for you to give. And I'm saying, don't let me stand in the way of you using your spiritual gift. Be that generous giver that God has called you to be. So it could be one person you are right now watching and God is putting it on your heart. Like, I, I want to complete that vision. I'm going to buy that equipment. But it's beyond the equipment. Like, I know you guys aren't in person, but, but we're, we're kind of like a church without a home. We're, we're kind of like a homeless church. Now, we meet at the golfers, and we're super blessed by that. And, but, but we also know that our stability, in a lot of different ways, especially with the kids, depends on us having a house. And so we don't have a building in mind right now. We don't have a place in mind. There may be somebody watching right now and, and God is stirring your heart by me even talking about this. And maybe you own property around here. Maybe you own property. And you're like, I, I, I want to make sure the atmosphere has a place that they can start raising up. Like we want to be able to do that coffee house concert venue. We want to be able to do that here just like we did in Vegas. The picture that we saw, we, we want a building here that, that we can take a building and make it a community center. So maybe somebody's going to give us a building. Maybe another church is going to say, hey, we, we want to let you have our church. Our church isn't really being used. It's sad that there's some churches around America that, that are built and paid for and nobody even goes on a Sunday. It's just shut down. It's not because of COVID. It's because nobody wants to go. Maybe, maybe that's going to happen. Maybe you got a connection. You're saying, hey, I, there's a church that, that needs people right i don't know but there's a lot more that we want to do and so we are kicking off a three-month campaign today called the opportunity fund we started this pre-covid 
but COVID kind of iced things for a minute and, and now we're ramping it back up. And we have a goal in mind to be able to raise $500,000 so that when the opportunity comes up for us to move into a house, that we will have the finances to be able to get in there. We don't believe that God wants us in debt. And we, we know that just like, you know, when Tara and I had our first house, right? We had to have some help. We, you know, Tara's parents helped us. My parents helped us. Most of you that, that have had multiple houses, you know that the first house that was the hardest to get was your first one, right? Or the house that was hardest to get was your first one. And typically it takes, like, you know, a parent, a grandparent, that rich uncle, right? Somebody gets in there and helps you. And I really believe like our first house it's going to require a parent, a grandparent, a rich uncle, somebody out there. And you're like, I, I believe that God is calling me to be that parent, that grandparent, that rich uncle. Like maybe God has blessed me for this moment so that I can help Atmosphere Church get into their first house. I don't know. But if, if God is stirring your heart, you'll know it. But maybe it's not that. Maybe it's not some big extravagant one-time gift. Maybe for the next three months, you could do what Tara and I are going to do. And, and we're going we're gonna to take our finances and we're going to leverage it. And for the next three months, we're, we're going to take a, an amount that God gives us and, and we're going to give above and beyond what we normally give so that we can reach that goal together. Because God can take our little bit and put it together with your little bit. And together, we're going to make this big vision become a reality. So I believe in the next three months, we're going to see this goal of 500,000. You know, we, we started this pre-COVID. We already have 72,000 of that raised. And I believe that rest is coming in. And maybe it's going to come in today. I don't know. But my heart is there's so much more we could do. Locally, globally. But in order for us to do it, it's going to take us to have a heart for the house. And you can't have a heart for the house without first bringing the treasure so that your heart will follow your treasure. So with that in mind, I want to pray for God just to stir us up, to level us up, to get us to a place of generosity, to live with this place so that, that we can be growing in our faith and at the same time growing the kingdom of God in this world. So pray with me. Father, I thank you, God, for everybody that is listening, that is part of today's talk. And God, I pray specifically for financial breakthrough for somebody that is struggling today. God, I sense that there's somebody here that, God, they don't even know how they're going to make it till the end of the month. And they're stressed out about it. They're staying awake at night. God, I pray that you would supernaturally send them the blessing. God, as they entrust you with their lives and they entrust you with their treasure, that, God, you would move heaven to earth for them. I don't know who that's for, but God, I pray that blessing for their life. And God, for the rest of us, Lord, I pray, help us level up in the area of our generosity. Bring us to that place, God, that you're calling us to go. And, and Lord, put an amount, this, this next three months of challenge. Lord, maybe it's gonna be a one-time gift. We've, we've had that money saved up and we're gonna give a one-time gift, God. Or, Lord, there's amounts that you're stirring in our hearts that we're gonna give above and beyond what we've been giving just so that we can invest it so that the big vision that God has given for the Conejo Valley can become a reality with my little. So help us to have that amount. Lord, let us determine in our hearts right now that that is from you and we're gonna, we're gonna go for it in that area. And if somebody is not following you, Jesus, they're, they're tuned in and God, you're stirring their heart right now. If, if you're not a follower of Jesus, I know this is a financial talk, but it's more than a financial talk. This is a talk about living a radical way for not this world, but the world to come. And here's the news flash: Nobody gets out of here alive. And so there is a date with death that you are going to meet, I'm going to meet, and it's going to happen. And we're going to get to that place and we're going to stand before God. And we're going to have to give an account for how we lived our life. Now Jesus came to this earth. He died for our sin and he resurrected from the dead so that we might have eternal life with God. And what we do to step into that promise and, and to receive this eternal life is we receive his Holy Spirit. So we pray and ask Jesus to come in and live on the inside of us. And when that happens, the change begins. 
And the change always happens from the inside out. Old things pass and new things come. And so if you're ready to step into that decision to follow Jesus with your life, to receive his Holy Spirit in your soul, then pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. Thank you for dying for my sin and resurrecting from the dead to place eternal life in my soul. For today, I follow you. And I'm going to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, hey, welcome to the family of God. Before this day is over, tell somebody. Don't just tell Dada and our online fam. Tell somebody that you live with. Tell somebody that you work with. Say, I became a follower of Jesus. And hey, besides that, text the word follow to us so that we can bless you with some resources. And they're free. And you know, when you are generous to the church, you allow us to give free resources to people like today that just said yes to following Jesus for the first time. So you text us the word follow to 805-334-8700 and we will love to send you a free Bible and other resources that are gonna help bless your life. But we love you guys. And before we sign off, we wanna worship God with one more song. And after that, we will see you here, there, or in the air. Have a great week. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms, and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you. To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.